Welcome to Baker and Taylor's Storytime Palooza, our week-long virtual story times highlighting authors from our Summer Reading Prize Program. Whether you join us from home or from your library, we are so happy that you're with us today. My name is Allison Curtin, and I'm the Marketing and Brand Manager for Children's and Teen Services here at Baker and Taylor, where we call our department cats. As part of our yearly prize book program, we offer discounted giveaway books for libraries, but we're also this year offering a number of live author events for you throughout the entire month of June. Check out the link in the comments to see what some of our other events are. But this morning, we have a very, very special event. Our guest author today is Victoria Scott Miller. She is the creator of the book series, The Museum Lives in Me from Paw Prints Publishing. This is also her debut children's book series. Scott Miller is the founder of North Carolina's first black owned children's bookstore, The Liberation Station. She has been um, named as a commissioner and an archivist at the North Carolina Museum of Art to serve as both creative director and author. And her book can be found in every North Carolina public elementary school and in every North Carolina state public library. So if you're logging in from one of those places this morning, make sure you check out this book. So she'll be reading from us today from the first book in the series, Miss Edmonia's Class of Wildfire. Without further ado, Victoria, the Baker and Taylor Storytime Palooza floor is all yours. Really excited to be here. Thank you so much for the invite. And without further ado, let's let's get into the story. Miss Edmonia's Class of Wildfires. Class field trips were always fun, but Miss Edmonia took trips to the museum very seriously. Class, what are we? Wildfires, the children shouted. And what does that mean? Asked Miss Edmonia. We are wise, intelligent, lovable, determined, fiercely innovative, respectful, exuberant scholars. Very good, wildfires, said Miss Edmonia. Now onward and upward. What a beautiful walk toward the museum, said Miss Edmonia. Now let's turn on our listening ears and open our eyes wide. I can tell you're excited, so I won't make you wait. Here's your paper and pencil. Now let's take a look at the art. Let's find your traits. Honesty, bravery, strength, or compassion. As we walk around, what grabs your attention? Class, open your eyes to the wonders you'll see as we explore these beautiful galleries. Are there any questions before we enter? May I sit down? Where's the bathroom? Can we take the art home? And like shooting stars blazing across the sky, Miss Edmonia answered their questions all at once. Yes. If you need it, give your legs a rest. And the bathroom is down the hall and to the left. And no, it is important that art reflects what is within and those around. And if we took the art home, it would not be found. Atilio sat on the leather bench. Cara Clementine walked from the corridor to sit next to him. Hey, Atilio, she asked, what's the matter? I think museums are boring, Atilio said. I wish I could play my video game right now, play soccer, listen to music in my bed, anything but this. Trust me, 
I understand exactly what you mean. How you feel about the museum is how I feel about the violin, but my parents make me play it anyway. I'd much rather be doing this. And she pointed to her hand painted shoes. Then Cara Clementine hopped up off the bench and rounded the bend toward a new adventure. Miss Edmonia's voice faded into the distance, leaving only the screech of sneakers on the wood floor as little feet shuffled from piece to piece. Soon, Cara Clementine stopped in her tracks. Her jaw dropped and her eyes widened as she looked up, mesmerized. She tilted her head from side to side. The lines and shadowing began to stretch beyond the walls of the canvas. The woman in the painting stared at Cara Clementine, fierce. Seeing Cara Clementine's excitement, Attilio got up and headphones on, joined his class to look at the art before his boredom grew. He weaved this way and that and paused at a boxing scene. Well, this isn't boring, he thought. He then came to a painting of a jazz ensemble, orange, teals, and goals. As he marveled at the image, all that movement, the music in his ears grew muffled and was replaced by the beautiful burst of a brassy trumpet. As he closed his eyes, this music transported him to a dazzling French quarter. He stood in place, swaying from side to side. Miss Edmonia exclaimed, Let's keep up class, no lagging behind. Ask if you have questions, I am here to guide. Attilio quickly snapped out of his musical trance and walked over to his class at the entrance of a new modern light installation. Look at this, cried Cara Clementine, it's Magical. This is art too, thought Attilio. It felt like being in one of his video games. It's an infinity of stars, Cara Clementine continued. Attilio helped fellow wildfire Tanner step inside the illuminated room. Watch your feet, he told him and took his hand. Then. He watched as Tanner skipped down the dim corridor to the rest of his classmates who were now making funny faces at one another. Attilio stood still, reflecting as his class began moving toward the next gallery. Everything began to slow down. And it was in this stillness that he was reminded of how easy it was to help his classmates, family, even community members, realizing he felt most comfortable when collaborating or helping others. He thought of a character trait that he could not yet say aloud. And with a deep sigh, he shrugged his shoulders and moved along. Cara Clementine had waited for Attilio. Guess what? I found my trait. I'm a leader. Don't you think you're creative too? Attilio asked. Just look at your shoes. They've got cardboard wings. I can see that. Thanks Attilio, said Cara Clementine. After seeing the confident woman in that painting, I feel anything is possible for me. I can't wait 
to show my parents how art and music go hand in hand. Both take creativity and leadership. What about you? What's your trait? I don't know yet, Attilio answered with a slight pause in his voice. I'm excited, class, to learn your traits. Just a few more stops to navigate. We'll visit ancient Egypt, Greece, Rome, Italy, and then finish at Rodin. Did you know that his amazing sculptures were all made by hand? The class began to weave throughout the galleries once more. Some pointed at the bust of the cat goddess Schemet, as others giggled at the nose on the portrait of Marcus Imperior Aurelius. And they finally arrived at the sculptures of Augusta Rodin. <clears throat> Attention wildfires, it's now time. I'm eager to learn your traits. Get in line, say it with a whisper or say it loud. However you do it, say it proud. Edwin, Cara Clementine, Attilio, you go first. Tell us the discoveries you've unearthed. Edwin shouted, I am curious. You are a courageous, upbeat, radiant, innovative, optimistic, unique star. Car Clementine declared, I am a leader. Yes, you are a lively, encouraging, adventurous, determined, energetic role model. I am, I am, never mind. Attilio slumped and walked towards Miss Etmonia. Go on, Attilio, Miss Etmonia said encouragingly. I am kind, said Attilio. <clears throat> yes. Yes, you are a knowledgeable, inspiring, noble dreamer. One by one, the wildfires share their traits that they uncovered within the museum. Thank you all for sharing, said Miss Etmonia. Now gather around my wildfires and let's do a rodent pose. Is everyone ready? Yes, the class shouted joyously. All right, smile and on the count of three say, the museum lives in me. And whether it's bravery, curiosity, compassion or grit, a museum's collection should reflect all parts of you, your gifts, tenacity, goodness and the creativity in all that you do. So always remember that no matter your race, color, gender, or creed, art resides inside of you. You make the gallery. Thank you. Thank you so much, Victoria. That was a wonderful reading of the book. I'm checking our chat right now. Thank you. We have some emailed questions. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit about your inspiration for Miss Edmonia, the character Miss Edmonia in yes. the class of wildfires? Absolutely. So um, Miss Edmonia and uh, all of the characters in this particular series are named after marginalized um, creators. And I found Edmonia Lewis's sculpture inside of our state's art museum. And I found her to be, um, I call her an enchanted glory because a lot of her work was unknown. Um, a, a lot of her background dealt with um, marginalization of, of being a woman during that time, a black woman creating um, art and sculptures particularly. Uh, one thing I love about Emmanuel Lewis is that she did not um, have an assistant because she didn't want anyone to take credit for her work. 
And I just think her spirit, um, her ingenuity was pioneering. And that really attracted me to the character. Her name was Edmonia Wildfire Lewis, which is why Edmonia, Miss Edmonia has her class of wildfires. And I just thought, I thought that if I were to create a, um, an educator that embodied tenacity, ingenuity, um, kindness, and creativity, then it would look like uh, Miss Edmonia. That's great. Edmonia Lewis is such an interesting historical character. I always love as a history nerd and as um, a lover of children's literature, when somebody can combine the both of them and uh, yeah. make it accessible for readers. So yeah, that's fantastic. One of the other questions that we had um, was what, is, what are some of your favorite children's books right now? What are you reading? Um, P.S. to our, our, our viewers, um, um, Victoria is a mom. And so she's well-versed, not only is she a bookseller and a writer and an author, but she's well-versed as a parent of young children um, yes. of, of what, what, what works when you're reading story time, when you're reading mm -hmm. bedtime, um, right. what are your favorite right now or your favorite family favorites right now? Family favorites. Um, ooh, so there are so many wonderful books kind of just coming out on the market right now. I, I will say anything by Derek Barnes. Um, so the author of I Am Every Good Thing. I have two boys. And so affirmation books are really great. Um, also, we um, we have The Beast of Prey. So we have a 13-year-old and an eight-year-old. And so their interests are, of course, completely different. But for our 13-year-old, he likes uh, Ayana Gray's Beast of Prey series. And with Emerson, he likes um, Victory Stand or comic books, anything with Miles Morales, Jason Reynolds is kind of have been our go-to, our primary go-tos in the family as they are growing up. Fantastic. Jason Reynolds, yeah. always a fan favorite. We're big, Absolutely. we're huge fans of Jason at Cats. Yes. Um, and then um, I wanted to also ask you, can you talk about um, your favorite artwork as mm -hmm. a young, um, as a young person, what art moved you and inspired you? So um, I actually, can I grab something really quick? Cause I want to show you a piece Absolutely. of artwork. Okay. One second. <laughs> Perfect. Um, and then, um, readers, we just want you to know that, um, you can check out all the other fabulous summer reading, um, prize books at TS360. We have a special landing page. Um, feel free to check it out. Um, it's, uh, standalone shopping. You can check out all of our authors, including Victoria Scott Miller <laughs> and some of the other authors that will be reading for us this week. So I will show you, um, this is a piece of artwork and, my father gifted me my first piece of original black art when I was four years old. So you'll see he autographed it on the back um, when I was four. And I wanted to bring that piece up because I think that art is no different or loving art is no different than loving books. You know, we are first attracted uh, to a book with our eyes and then, you know, it, it produces a level of curiosity that allows us to kind of open the book up. And so um, I, we are collectors of art. So we have an extensive art collection. Um, a lot of the characters that were named in the book. So you have Cara Clementine, who was named after all of my favorite um, um, artists. So you have Cara Clementine named after Cara Walker and Clementine Hunter. You have Attilio, who was also a painter, an Italian painter. Um, you have Edwin, who was also named after a painter. And so not only did I take historical references when working on this particular part of the series, but I also wanted to infuse them so it could be an intergenerational history lesson. And I would hope that children get curious enough to want to discover um, new artworks. But I, I'm, I'm really big on um, collecting arts. Uh, Clarence Hayward, I have Clarence Hayward, I have... Um, who is a prolifically talented um, artist. So if I have an image where he has painted my face um, green <laughs> and uh, I love I love his his work and his and his curiosity with that. Um, so quite a few, Jamon Bullock uh, is a great um, artist as well. And Truth of Strength, who is Jesse Owens Young. She's a professor out of Baltimore who does a lot of um, artwork 
using historical paper uh, as well infused in her art. So I love and collect art. I love art museums. I think that art museums have such a big responsibility to make sure that they showcase the humanity of all people. And I hope that this body of work continues to expand that conversation. Absolutely. Indeed. Indeed. Um, I love you mentioned one of the artists you mentioned uses um, historical um, paper. I love um, textile and different design, different fibers and such. That sounds such an interesting. I'm going to check that one out. Please do. We, yeah. we have another question and then okay. um, to, 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 to finish up for the day. Sure. Um, Victoria, what traits would you let Miss Edmonia know about that reflect are reflected in you at the end of this museum trip if you were in the class of wildfires? Oh, that's such a beautiful question. I love that. Um, I so if I were walking through the museum with this class, um, I would say that my character trait would be boundless. To be boundless, um, art is such a beautiful um, representation of a story that never ends. You know, the lines often go off of the canvas or there are uh, certain colors that are created from connecting other colors. And I think that represents a boundlessness that, um, that I, I allow myself to access uh, daily as a practice. I am a practitioner of pushing limits and understanding, you know, um, you know, where to exist in the world. And uh, I would say at the end of at the end of this journey, on this field trip, I would I would say that I am boundless. So that's wonderful. That's very inspirational. May you continue mm -hmm. to bound outward further yes. and further field with Miss Edmonia and the class of wildfires. And I'm sure um, the multiple other creative, wonderful things you have going. Um, I just want to say thank you again for reading for us and everyone who joined today. Thanks so much. Again, um, Victoria Scott Miller's title, Miss Ammonia's Wildfires, is part of our Baker and Taylor Summer Reading Prize List, as well as a number of other authors. Check it out on TS360. Happy summer reading, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. Bye.